everybody, it's Julie with Reflections Framing and Stitching, and today is Monday. It is, I don't know what day it is. It is it the 19th or the 20th? 19th. It says so, right down here in the corner. 19th of August already, and this is chart of the day video number 158. Welcome. How are you? How's your week going? Of course, it's only Monday, so it's probably going okay, but you never know. It could start out bad and get better. Um, you, j you just never know. Uh, today has been a, a better day than the last last week. Um, I think I, and I mentioned in last week's video that I had tweaked my back, and by the time Monday uh, finished, I could barely walk, um, so I did a little more than tweaking, I think. I still don't know what I did. It must have been something that I did uh, maybe rolling over in bed or something because I don't usually, usually when it happens I know that I've done something and I know it at the time I'm doing it. And then of course what I did during the day on Monday probably didn't improve the situation any because I did go outside and and uh, remove furniture from the front porch and hose down the front porch and put the furniture back and <laughs> I stood underneath the neighbor's window for a half an hour for now it's closer to 45 minutes um, trying to keep their kids from falling out the window I could not get the parents to come to the door um, so I stood out there for a while talking to the, there was a five-year-old that was in charge of the two, two twins, two-year-olds, and, and I rang the doorbell, I pounded on the door, nobody would answer the door, um, so I finally called 911 and stood there waiting and to, for the sheriff to show up and he never did until after mom finally showed up. Apparently dad was down in the basement working. Could not hear me yelling in the window, could not hear me pounding on the door or ringing the doorbell multiple times or hear his kids screaming. So um, they had knocked the, the window screen out and were leaning out the window when I was hosing off the front of the house. I didn't want them to jump out the window and, you know, go out into the street or to hit their head on the concrete under the window. So I tried to be a good Samaritan, and that did not really work out for me. The sheriff did finally show up, and then he came and talked to me and said he thought everything was fine. I kind of disagree with him. I don't think you should... You should there's a baby gate across the bedroom window or bedroom door. If you can't hear your kids and respond when they're yelling, there's a problem. But he said everything was fine and he talked to the parents, so you know, I'm I'm probably now the mean old lady across the street, but I it you know, I would have wanted someone to do that for my kids if they had of course, I would hope that I would hear them screaming, there's someone at the door. But anyway, that's not what you're here for. You're here for cross-stitch. So uh, we're, that's what we're going to talk about. Last week's question of the week, question of the day, was what dumb thing have you done that resulted in you getting injured? Um, there were some funny ones, some really funny ones. A couple of them had me laughing out loud. Um, I'm glad I'm not the only idiot out there. Not that you're an idiot, but <laughs> the only one out there that does stupid things and ends up hurting yourself. So anyway, thank you very much for responding to that question. Uh, I appreciate it greatly. So we're going to skip right into today's chart, which is Hello Summer from Erin Elizabeth. I'm I'm not, you know, we're pretty much landlocked here in Nebraska, so we don't have 
um, you know what those are. It, it has escaped my head. Lighthouse. We don't have lighthouses. Well, technically, yes, we do. We have a lighthouse on a man-made lake. It's called Lenoma Beach, and there is a lighthouse that used to have a restaurant in it, but it's been closed for years. So technically, we don't have a lighthouse because it's closed. But there is a structure that resembles a lighthouse not too far outside of Omaha. Um, anyway, I thought this was really pretty. Um, a great summer summer stitch and I'm trying to hold on to summer with both hands because the kids some of the kids around here started school this is their second week of school and it's only the 19th so I'm I, you know, I just feel like we are we are making our kids grow up too fast they're not getting a proper summer it's too short anymore that's that's just my opinion you're entitled to your own opinion um, so I'm holding on to summer with both hands because I'm not ready for fall I'm not ready for winter I want the heat and the humidity for a while longer so hopefully it will be a long drawn out summer into fall before the cold weather gets here so I thought that was really pretty and I thought I would share it with you. It uh, is called uh, to be stitched on 28 count mushroom lugana. I did not have any mushroom lugana, but I did have some 28 count mushroom, no, 32 count mushroom linen. So I will show you that in a minute. Uh, the stitch count is 70 by 70, so it, it is not a huge stitch. You could still get this done this summer and display it. Um, I even like the finishing on this. It's not overdone. I think it, it leaves the focus where it needs to be. So I like it. Um, the calls for DMC floss and there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different colors. Um, on 28 it's going to be at about a 5x5 five five. so not huge like I said you can get it done and still display it for the rest of summer um, let's see colors I, you know I wasn't necessarily planning on getting this done today because I'm behind in everything else because I've been kind of keeping a low profile and not doing anything so as to let my back heal um, but I got I got my work done and I thought well there's still daylight left so let's do this uh, so this is the colors and I'm going to show them to you here in just a second this is the color palette, with the exception of this is the gray that's called for, for like the seagulls. And it's a little too purpley for me, so I went with, what did I go with? O, 04, DMC 04. So the, that's the color palette. It uses my favorite DMC red, which is 3777 my favorite DMC red. It's a little rusty red, you know. Not that bright in your face candy apple red and and which is not me. I like a little more muted red when I stitch. So anyway, this is 32 count mushroom Belfast linen. And this is your color palette. On that, which would look quite nice. It would look very, very nice. And I have a few other neutral colors that I chose um, before I go into other colors. This is a 28 count vintage country mocha, which I thought would be nice. It gives a little movement. So what I was saying was I'm using a mascara tube to hold these and not my usual skewer because I wasn't planning on doing it and I didn't bring the skewer upstairs. 
So there it is on Vintage Country Mocha. Um, this is I think it's 16 count ancient from picture this plus yeah that's a six again I'm not wearing my glasses so I think it would look good on there give the little splashes of that blue gray It would look good that way. I also have ancient in a 28 count linen, which is a little bit different in color than the Ada, but not too bad. So that would look good. That would look Good, good, good. What else have I got in this pile? Okay, I have a couple gray colors. This is 32 count dapple from Picture This Plus. It's a lovely gray. It's got nice modeling, nothing too over the top. And I think I think this is the one, there was one, one that I thought, you know, the purple looked better on. Maybe not this one. One of the cut, nah, probably that one, um, that I thought the, the, the called for gray would look better on, but it's not this one. So those are the gray, it's, those are the colors on gray-ish. Dapple tends to have be kind of a green gray. There are blue grays, there are purple grays, there are green grays, there are brown grays. This is 18 count vintage gray. It's like vintage country mocha, only in gray. Looked like that. I think would look good too. But then we're going to go into an array of blues, which, you know, it's funny since I don't really care for blue, but I mean, blue is fine as a color. It's just not my favorite color. This is 40 Count Murtaugh from Stephanie. That's who. And it's a, it's a different you know, depending on where where you get it from, it can be really, really wild. It can be more solid and subtle. So it kind of depends on what part of the fabric. And we can't always give you the cut out of the middle doesn't work that way. I did have someone ask me the other day, can I have that piece in the middle? No, sorry. You can you can buy more to get that piece in the middle, but you, no, I'm not going to cut a hole in the middle of a yard of fabric. So this is Murtaugh. It would kind of give it a stormy lighthouse look, which since the purpose of a lighthouse is to help ships stay off the rocks. A stormy look would be good. Pete's Dragon, one of my favorite movies, it has a lighthouse in it. Just FYI. Um, this is 40 Count Oxygen. It's very pretty blue. Very light so you need to keep in mind that your your white which is in the lighthouse and the word summer might not show up as 
good as you might want it. But I thought the colors were very pretty on there, so. It probably would be okay. Uh, this next one is 32 count stone washed. Oxygen was from Fiber on a Whim. No, Atomic Ranch. I knew that was wrong the minute it came out of my mouth. This stone washed is. I don't know from whom. Nope, I don't know. But you can see it has kind of some peachy and brown and blue. So it's got a little bit of everything. Looks like that with the colors. I don't know. Can you see that? I guess you can. Which I think would be also very, very pretty. So did you have a good weekend? Mine was pretty much spent sitting on my butt. Um, but I've gotten a lot of stitching done. I finished two projects in the last week. I don't have them here. They're at the shop. I took them in so I could choose frames for them. Um, the stuff we sent to the fair arrived in perfect condition. And I think the judging takes place this week. I had to pull one of mine out because on the advice of Lori, it was going to go up against one of my other ones, and she said she would prefer that I just wait until next year. So that's what I did. This is 14 count vintage blue whisper. It's kind of a purpley blue, which is where I think this gray, the more purple gray would be prettier. But the other gray would be fine also. Um, 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 my 04 decided to go for a little trip. And it took 318 with it. The nerve. Um, next up, oh, there's only two more. This is Mayday Bold. Again, I don't know who it's from. Might be Seraphim. I don't know. So it it's it's blue, predominantly blue. It has some lighter shades of beige in there too. But I think that would look good. And last but not least, this is a 38 count legacy linen called a Vermeer Blue. If you just like a plain, this would be fine too. So which one is your favorite? What do you think of that chart? Did you like it, not like it? Like I said, I think it's a, one of the cuter ones I've seen with a lighthouse on it. Um, I probably wouldn't ever stitch it, but uh, I thought some of you might enjoy that one. So, okay. Um, yeah, please respond. Which, which was your favorite color? Whether you like the chart or not like the chart. Uh, question for today uh, is what percentage of your finishes, so your your pieces that you finish the stitching on, sorry I think I got a hair in my eye, what percentage of those that you have finished are fully finished, whether it's framed, pillowed, bannered, put into a quilt, 
however you finish your things, a drum or a, you know, whatever. What would you say the percentage of your pieces that you have finished are actually finished, finished? At one time I would have said 99% of mine are fully finished. But I, ha I, I remembered I have some pillow, ones that are supposed to be pillows downstairs. And a couple others. I don't know whether to count them. They used to be fully finished. <laughs> but then I took them out of their frames. And I haven't done anything with them since. So I'm going to say 95% of my, my finished with the stitching projects are fully finished or will be fully finished when I get them stretched. You know, like the two I finished. I finished my Quaker Welcome and I finished the Eliza's Birds from JBW. So uh, I was trying to pick out framing. I had it in my head that Eliza's birds needed to be matted. And so I was playing with, what day did I go to work? I went for a couple hours on Thursday. Not a good idea. <coughs> Must have been Saturday. I was playing with some framing options. And uh, I was not having a whole lot of luck. I knew I wanted it matted. But I wasn't really happy with what I was seeing in the matting. You know, it's pretty limited because it was pink and green. And there were some people kind of watching my process when I was framing and uh, they found it very interesting. I eventually, I had it double matted and eventually, because I wasn't, I wasn't happy with it. So I added a lighter colored mat in between the other two and it made like a world of difference and they were really surprised at the difference that just adding that mat would make to the full finish. So that was it was kind of interesting because i didn't i didn't know if if that would make a difference or not and it did i i was then happy with it so i've got that one chosen and i just did a black frame with a kind of a bronzy gold um beaded inner lip for the quaker welcome so once my back is better i will add that into the queue for stretching and get that done but I can't show them to you in this video because I don't have them they're at the shop um, but hopefully I will remember to bring them home when I record next week's video which I want to tell you the entryway is finished I love it I absolutely love it I think it turned out exactly what I had in my head um, so I'm pretty pretty happy with it. Can't wait to show everybody. So um, so that will be in next week's video. Connie is in town, and uh, hopefully my back will be well enough to do a little antique shopping next weekend. We have extended stitch next Saturday which is a uh, when we when we you know I I we do second and last Saturday stitch normally and it's usually from 11 until 3 um this time we're going to do 11 until uh 8 o'clock or until people leave whichever comes first and it's a potluck so people will bring people will bring uh something to eat so we'll probably eat about noon the first go around and then probably have something to eat again later in the day so it's going to be a a long stitching day and I told everyone in in my newsletter that if they could please have their purchases all done by two o'clock 
So then I could sit and stitch with everybody. That would be really nice. I would appreciate it. And so we've got that coming up. So maybe next Sunday or Monday. I have a cardiology appointment sometime this month. So I got to I gotta look and see when that is. But anyway, so there's my question of the of the day. What percentage do you think your full your finished stitching is fully fi uh, What percentage of your stitching is fully finished? Are you a fully finished person or do you just stick it under the bed and never look at it again? Um I'm hoping you don't do that because that's just a shame. It should be out and enjoyed. Even put it on a bullet board with pins. Even if you don't want to finish it, at least you can enjoy looking at it. But I'm going to let you go um, for this time. And I will see you uh, next week in the regular video and in two weeks for another chart of the week video or chart of the day video. Until then, you take care. I hope everyone is doing well and enjoying what's left of summer. Um, yeah, you take care until next time. Bye.